In a reality-based Bond film, this was his 15th, isn't what he's been called upon to do on the MCU and Star Wars movies he's worked on. Star Wars and uh, Doctor Strange, it's really the visual effects are the key guys on that. And we're, we're doing our piece and keeping reality ground-based effects wherever we can. But, you know, I can't produce a Star Destroyer go through space. I'm good, but I'm not that good. <laughs> so what do visual effects do in the concept of a Bond movie? Chris built an amazing submersible set, which was 50 feet long. Uh, could roll 360 degrees and submerge into a 20-foot tank of water. What are we seeing that's not real? When Bond comes out, we're, we're adding a bit of lighting and some extra bubbles. But then when we get outside, then we take over and it's uh, we're into all CG shots of the trawler going down. We're, you know, the, it's a full CG build and everything is, is CG. That same ethic applies to Dune. The space epic showcases worlds that are imaginary, but director Denis Villeneuve wanted visual effects to keep it real. Denis Villeneuve wanted it to feel as if it was a, a real world, as if you could take cameras there and film it as if it was actually you know, a, a real thing. He didn't want it to be too sci-fi, which is a bit weird because it's a sci-fi novel, obviously. But you're untethered by any kind of reality. You can put a camera anywhere, you can make anything look. And yet that wasn't the idea here, right? We didn't want to do anything that was too effectsy. Or, or showy. Denis didn't want to take people out of the story by assuming that it's a visual effect. Obviously, it's a giant worm that they don't exist, but I had to try and make it sit in the desert to make it look like it could exist. Dune's massive sandworms might be this year's most spectacular effect. I guess a lot of what we see in terms of the sand is a practical effect, but what is a visual effect with regard to those amazing sandworms? Uh, on set, when you see the guys, Gurney and Paul, when the sandworms approaching them, the special effects department had a, a, a quite a large uh, metal plate on a vibrating rig under the sand. So when they sort of fall down and put their hands on the sand, their hands actually, they actually do sink into the sand. So you're taking this literal effect and you're making it into a visual effect. You have to kind of imagine what it would look like so it has the size and scope that really blows our mind when we watch it. Exactly, yeah. So you, you have that close-up moment with the, the moving sand. We recreate that for a broader area. Uh, and then behind that, we have to put the, the, the sandworm in there. And we've got to make that dune collapse, explode, get destroyed by this worm. The result, the kind of breathtaking image all five nominees have conjured up to earn their place in the people's category. Even you who creates these images, you're blown away by what you see when you see I, it in the theater. Exactly, yeah. Seeing it all come together is, yeah, I, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's still amazing. I've seen it several times and I still haven't got bored with it, even though I worked <laughs> on it for about two years, yeah. And so these guys do great work. And so just a note, here are the last 10 years worth of winning visual effects teams. You'll see them right now. See that person in the blue dress? That's right, up uh, the upper right-hand corner, that's Sarah Bennett from Ex Machina. She is just the second woman ever to win in this category back in 2015. Ever, just two women ever? Hollywood, maybe we could do a little better in this category? Just a thought, Amy? I couldn't agree more, and, and pictures don't lie. That really was stunning when you saw what she was up against. White men, yeah. almost exclusively white men, no diversity in there at all. Chris, thank you for that and showing it to us like that. But great point, and maybe things are changing, but just two women. My yeah, goodness. I know. Well, let's add to that number hopefully tonight and in years to come. Coming up, though, we have the musical mastermind behind the massive success of the animated smash hit and Kanto. Could Lynn manuel Miranda become an EGOT winner tonight? Stay with us. Time, anytime, Nightline. It was an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcasts. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues. The hunt. 
True Crime 2020, now streaming on ABC News Live. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. Hey, my mom. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. I know what happened, and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart that he did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno. But a lot of people are predicting the Disney mega hit Encanto will walk away with the Oscar tonight for Best Animated Feature. The movie's massive success at the box office only tells part of the story. Six songs from the film soundtrack have made it onto Billboard's top 100 charts. Wow. That's incredible. The album itself is the first movie soundtrack to hit number one since 2019. Six songs from the film soundtrack, as we mentioned, already soaring in those charts. So it's like um, pretty incredible. I mean, it's Lin-Manuel. What do you expect, you know, right? It's not just that. It, it's one thing to have success and commercial success. It's another thing to make something that gets in people's heads, and it's just become a part of our culture. I guess, what was the Let It Go oh, uh, yes. from Frozen? Oh, yes. It's one of those things I that just... I sing that daily to you. You still... <laughs> Uh, still holding going, on. going off the rails now. Okay. So much of the music, as I mentioned, comes from the talented <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda, including Dos Oreguitas, nominated tonight for Best Original Song. Yeah, he's one win away it's from really becoming exciting. an EGOT winner, someone who has won all four major entertainment industry prizes. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. He announced yesterday, though, he is not going to be able to be here. This is just where we are. It's a part of it, but his wife has tested positive for COVID. He is not going to be able to be here. But Chris had a chance to sit down with him recently at the nominees' luncheon. Take a look. It's really exciting, you know. I just, um, I, I, I could not have anticipated the way in which the entire soundtrack has connected with folks. I, 70% of my phone is people sending me their kids singing Encanto songs. With Encanto, you know, after my experience at Moana, I just called Disney and said, if you're making a Latin-themed musical, like, your search is over. Like, I've been preparing all my life for this. So it's just been thrilling to see uh, it connect with viewers. Don't talk about From that film, you become the first solo songwriter to have a number one on Spotify in four years. And you probably didn't even know that. I and, didn't. and then your nominated song is the first song you've ever written in Spanish. Yeah. Dos oruguitas enamoradas pasan sus noches y madrugadas. It needed to be in Spanish. This is sort of the foundational moment uh, in this film. It required beyond the conversational Spanish that I have. I, I had my thesaurus at the ready because mm -hmm. I needed to move closer to poetry than my, my usual conversational Spanish. But um, I'm really proud of it, and I'm really proud of how it works in the movie. Meanwhile, you had the pandemic shutting down part of your production for Tick, Tick, Boom. Don't panic, don't jump shit. Did you worry that you might not get a chance to go back and finish that? Oh, there were so many times when I thought my first time directing is over before it started because it was, you know, the fate of the world was so uncertain. And even if, you know, it was safe to go back out, were we safe to film? You're making a musical. People are singing at close range in each other's faces. That's how this disease is spread. And so, you know, we really relied on science and we relied on our advisors to tell us the safest way to make this movie. And I'm really proud no one got sick on my set because this, remember, we filmed pre-vaccine. And I'm, I'm really proud that we were able to keep everyone safe and make our movie. How did the pandemic change your life? creatively or otherwise? It's interesting, you know, you don't 
think about how it affects your work, but now I look at surface pressure in Encanto and think, oh, that's a song I wrote in April of 2020, and it's all about how do I keep my family safe? And what happens if I don't keep my family oh. safe? So in retrospect, there's things uh, that I made that were super autobiographical, and I can, I can really tell I'm bleeding into the recipe <laughs> as I'm making the meal. Um, but I, I didn't see it at the time. It's now that I see the, those lyrics kind of jump out at me in a different way because of, you know, the headspace I was in. He truly is a genius. I can't wait to see what he does next. But in the meantime, Lin-Manuel Miranda, we should say, has some tough competition in the best original song category. The superstar brother-sister team of Billie Eilish and Phineas are nominated for their James Bond theme song. Chris also caught up with the talented siblings at the Oscars nominee luncheon. The Oscars, I don't know. It was such a such a crazy, surreal, unbelievable like thing I would never ever have dreamed about happening in my life, ever. Uh, You're no stranger to acclaim of all kinds <laughs> and to nice shiny trophies, but I could see the excitement when you talked about the Oscars. What is it about the Academy Awards that's special for you? Um, gosh, it's hard to like describe, but I think it's just such a, a, a world that I'm not um, really in. I mean, we're musicians. It's very, it's like a very different world, you know, acting and, just actors in general and the Oscars in its own th It's just like a completely different energy. Was it obvious to everybody else that I've fallen for a lie? The songwriting is such an achievement because it's a combination of your world and the intimacy of your world with the biggest movie imaginable. How do you put yourself in your usual space and yet find a way to include this massive movie and what it's trying to do in your artistry? It was a big deal for us to make sure that we were not taking away from the sound of the franchise and also not straying too far away from myself that it felt um, non-organic and like not uh, What's the word? Um, authentic. Authentic, yeah. And it was hard to do that. I mean, it's really hard because you kind of, are, you kind of want to go one way or the other. It's hard to kind of be in the middle. You want to be like, okay, well, we'll just go full out and like make this song, or we'll just do what we know. But we had to do both. And um, I honestly pride ourselves, us, in like doing that. I feel like we did a, a pretty good job of, of uh, marrying the two. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Thank I think you. all of my favorite Bond songs from the past do that. So live and let die. If we're referencing uh, Paul McCartney, Adele. It doesn't feel like it's just an Adele song or it's just a Bond song. It feels like it's an Adele Bond song. Yeah. And I think that, to us, was the, the, you know, the, the golden goose. That was what we were trying to achieve, <laughs> you know, the whole time. Yesterday. We got to attend in 2019. Um, we performed the In Memoriam that year, so we were in the audience for it. Yeah. And I was, I was blown away the whole time. I mean, it, this it is. This is what I'm saying. It's a different thing. But everybody's super well behaved. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're way, they're completely different than musicians. When they the do the countdown like, and they're, they're about care. to roll, everybody's in their seat. Like it's, it's awesome. Yeah. What will it feel like to perform it? Oh my stage. God, so nerve wracking. Yeah, really scary, <laughs> <laughs> really scary. I'm glad though that it's um, a song that we've, that I've performed a lot already, right. which is, which makes it, takes a little pressure off because it's a hard song to sing and it's, uh, it, it, it would be really scary to do it for like the first time at the Oscars. <laughs> is it hard to sing just technically or hard to sing with all of us watching? Because Both. Because it's so intimate. Kind Both, of. I mean, you know, when I was, when I did the In Memoriam piece, I was looking out into like Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, that's all I have, I have to say. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> but like, that, just seeing faces that I have seen my entire life looking at me, it, uh, 
yeah, it was very scary and cool and unbelievable. So like it just everybody is is the most famous person you've ever seen. <laughs> it's so it's true. Really crazy. <laughs> Now with Billie Eilish, Beyonce, and other big stars all factoring into Best Original Song Race tonight, people aren't just going to be tuning in for the performances, they want to know who's taking home the Oscar. So let's bring back our team of experts to handicap this high profile race. Chris and Kelly, all right, how about you guys make the call? I mean, for me, I think it's easy. I think it's going to be Lin-Manuel Miranda. He's not here, and I think all of us understand and agree that he should not be here tonight, of course, because of the pandemic and his wife testing positive. But what a moment, because I think when it happens tonight, he'll be an EGOT winner, and that would have been such an amazing speech. Maybe they can zoom him in. I don't know. It could be. <laughs> I mean, Beyonce's nominated. She she won't just perform, but if she wins, she, she gets the Oscar. Yeah. I'm going to point out, speaking as a boomer, Best Song nominee Van Morrison is also not performing tonight. Realize he is the only nominee of any kind this year, including the actors, who once gave the single best performance in a Martin Scorsese film when he sang Caravan in The Last Waltz. Leaving my demographic and rejoining the real world, I think Billie Eilish is going to win this one because I think it's the only Bond film that ever made people cry, and she's a big part of that. Ah, uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Chris. Okay, Boomer. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I've never said it before. Chris, we love you, man. You yeah. are the absolute best. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you both. Coming up after the break, what is Oscars Sunday without the fashion? Josie joining us for our Style Watch as our coverage continues live from the red carpet. I've been I want to help people and I want to be a billionaire. I'm on the cutting edge of healthcare. This machine tests your blood in your own home. You're in over your head. You're going to lose everything. You don't understand the science. Her whole image is fake. I don't believe a word she says. You don't understand the vision. I've never met anyone quite like you, Miss Holmes. There's not. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? I won't ask you again, then. Are you a Nazi? <laughs> the deeper you go into the black markets, you put people to your life like this. The darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? It's about the money. That's all we do. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7", is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Welcome back. Look at that. Things are heating up on the red carpet at the Dolby Theater. We are counting down to the 94th Oscars here. And our style and fashion expert, Josie, is with us now on the red carpet to talk about the glam returning to the Oscars. It is so great to see the stars as they're now arriving, embracing that tradition of high fashion, glamour, and glitz after a very different year last year. Oh, no, the carpet is back. I am so happy for it. Everyone looks amazing. I mean, the energy is incredible. So where are you actually going to come down? You have uh, some top, your top five looks from the award season, right? It's not just about tonight. There's been a lot of award absolutely, shows absolutely. and a lot of red carpets. Sonia Sidney SAG Awards this is your number five. Yes, I love her. I mean, listen, she's 15. She plays a young Venus Williams in King Richard, but she's really become a breakout star. I really love the idea of 
of the sort of new group of ingenues on the carpet, first timers who are really becoming their own style icons in a way. And of course, India Moore was sort of an honorable mention for me as well. Yeah, I mean, that was some dress. She was rocking it too. All right, number four, you have Rachel Zegler at the Critics' Choice Awards. I know, I love Rachel. Listen, she's been making the rounds. Of course, she was amazing in West Side Story. She posted on Instagram that that Dior dress made her feel like a Disney princess. And I have to say, I agree. She's really become such a fresh face on the carpet and on the award seat. Uh, your number three was Michaela Cole. Oh, okay, so earlier I had said that if you had said this on paper, that you wanted to wear everything she wore for an awards red carpet, I would say, I don't know if that's gonna work. Midriff, <laughs> neon colors, everything that was probably on the do not do list, but she did it amazingly. <laughs> Look how beautiful that is. Christopher John Rogers, and of course she's inspired a lot of different celebrities to wear neon on the carpet and, and doing it brilliant. I love it, yes, that's the let's not blend in dress. Let's, <laughs> let's... I, want, I want heads to turn. <laughs> <laughs> and that she did, all right. Who comes in at your number two? Okay, number two from Squid Games, former model, but now a big TV star, Hong Young Jun, and she really has been making the scene as a Louis Vuitton spokesperson. Basically, she's worn nothing but custom dresses by Vuitton, and of course, this one she wore at the Critics' Choice has a built-in bustle. So there was a lot of criticism about this, but you know what? It gives her sort of a real fashion-forward uh, style icon status. She scores for originality there. Absolutely. All right, and number one, drum roll, please. Number one. Okay, wait, number one, number one, number one. You gonna wait for it? Okay, well, she's gonna be the, the belle of the ball. Okay, Ariana, Ariana DeBose. DeBose. I know, listen, I had to tee that up a little bit because, <laughs> listen, she's been really the breakout star for winning everything, but she has looked incredible on the carpet. She's really favored all of the bright, bright, bold colors. But what I love about this Oscar de Lorenzo dress that she wore at the Baptist is that it mimics her character, Anita, in the movie that has become so iconic. So in a way, she's also playing off of that character, and I love what she's done. And you know, we, we've been talking to you. If anybody's been watching here with us on the, on the network and here over the past several hours, it was not very busy. It was fairly empty behind us, even construction going on. You see, people are showing up. It's gotten busy behind us. So people are arriving. Have you seen anything on the red carpet? Anything someone was wearing that jumped out at you? Yeah, I've had my I've had my eyes tuned into that fashion cam. Okay. The Sonia uh, Sydney that we've talked about earlier yep. was one of the first to arrive. She looks incredible. She's wearing a custom Armani Privé gown. Wow. It's wow. simple. It's beaded, but it's so elegant. Look at her again. This is what I'm talking about. A 15 year old who's breaking, you know, really ground as as a style icon. And of course, one of my personal favorites and a friend of mine, Tracy Ellis Ross. Uh -huh. She looks. Dynamite. She just walked in literally, I'm not Fabulous. kidding, maybe two minutes ago. And it's sexy, it's glamorous, it's bold for her. I love it. I mean, listen, she can take home Best Dress Award for me anytime. Okay. And of course, I have to give, again, an honorable mention, because I love, to our Princess Jasmine, Naomi Scott, who I saw walk in earlier, and she looked phenomenal as well. And I know you were telling us what we were going to expect to see here on the red carpet. Big, bold, you yeah. said yards of fabric, and it's all coming true. It is, it is. I mean, we've seen a lot of people sort of swishing around in their big gowns and everything. It's it's, it's all right here. It's coming through. I know. This is, this is probably my favorite part <laughs> of the whole show, so thanks, and we'll be checking in with you. Uh, we want to mention in terms of best dress, Penelope Cruz has made a few of those lists in her time. Tonight, she comes dressed to win as a nominee in the Best Actress category for her role in Parallel Mothers. Here's Chris Connolly's interview with the Spanish superstar. That first performance you did in Live Flesh, who was that with? Pilar Bardem, who I always say that movie was like a, a, a rehearsal of life and not the other way around because uh, our scene was giving birth in a bus, and later, years later, she was gonna become my mother-in-law. So I, I really believe that those things in life are, are not coincidences. How was nomination morning in your household this year? It was crazy, overwhelming. We actually saw it live because it was 2 p.m. And, and Javier said, no, we think we should watch, watch it. And then quickly they said his name, uh, best actor. And I started to scream and say to him, but react, <laughs> react, say something. And he said, no, not, not yet, not yet. L l let's wait a little bit. He wanted to see what happened in my category. And I was like, one, ca close to impossible, two, Totally impossible. And then they said my name also. 
And then he started screaming and I also started screaming and crying and laughing at the same time for an hour and a half. It was very emotional news because being nominated the same, the same year, uh, for me, being nominated with a movie that is in Spanish, you know, that is with Pedro Almodovar, the reason why I decided to, to try to become an actress was Pedro. So there were like enough, enough reasons to be uh, crying and laughing at the same time for the rest of the day. What does it feel like at this stage of your career to get this kind of acknowledgement from your peers? To get a nomination for this very special role? Kind of a capstone of some of the wonderful work that the two of you have done together over the years. I feel very, very grateful because this movie was really intense to make and I love the character so much and what I have learned making it. And because it's a film with Pedro, it's a film in Spanish, you know, to see that the Academy is opening more and more to nominating films and performances in other languages, not just in English. It, it makes it even even more emotional for me. My first nomination ever was also with Pedro and was with Volver. So, man, I can say I have four, so half of them have been in, in, a, in movies in Spanish. Mi amor, yo te quiero mucho, eh? Janice, the photographer, is a very different sort of person from who you are. Why was she so interesting for you to take on as a character? Because the way Janice is forced to express her emotions, to, to not express her emotions, she has to become a great liar in life. She has to manipulate the people that she loves out of survival. Deja que me haga una prueba de paternidad. No. Janice, por favor. What did your children think as everybody's screaming and yelling and having a great time? It was funny because the only thing that my daughter wanted to know it was if there was going to be cake that day to celebrate. <laughs> so that was a really funny reaction. <laughs> Now, Penelope Cruz's career was not always paved with uh -huh. Oscar gold, like the other actresses nominated tonight. She did a lot of work before anyone in Hollywood really knew her name. So we're going to take a look at the best actress nominees before they were famous when we return. And we've got Colombian singer Sebastian Yatra, who will be performing uh, Dos Origuitas from Encanto tonight. All coming up. extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcasts. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. Hey, my mom. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. I know what happened, and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart that he did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. 
This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. Free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Here we go. All right, and here we are. We are back live in Hollywood. Yes, I have picked up a new co-host, folks, here on the red carpet. Not just, oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're out. There's, there's room for three. There's room for okay. three. Of course. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Good to Hi. see you. So happy to be here. Look at yes. us. We are a complement of colors. I agree. You are no the black on us fabulous. tonight. No, we're Come bringing on. it, bringing it. Uh, you're bringing an award tonight. Are you excited? I am bringing a uh, presentation. It's not an award. It's a pre it's an it's a presentation. It's a special presentation that cannot be discussed ahead of time. Say again. It's a special presentation that cannot be discussed ahead of time. I'm told. <laughs> it's a special presentation to Betty White. Oh. And I am wearing Stella McCartney, who's an animal rights activist, as Betty White was. Because I wanted to make sure that if I'm representing Betty White and her great love of animals and her dedication in her life to animal causes, that then I wear a designer who uses sustainable materials, who tells the same story in their work, which is what Stella McCartney does. So it felt like a perfect way to walk the walk and talk the talk and made me a beautiful glittery gown. I love it. Well, I hope what? it was okay that we just announced. You said you before know what? we came on here. <laughs> you know what? What are they going to do? Right? Not have me do it? No. I mean, <laughs> the truth is, they want surprises. Yeah. But the truth is, you don't need... I'm here. They know I'm doing something. Like, I don't need to be big surprise. Well, we surprise. appreciate breaking that here on <clears throat> Because ABC I want to talk about Betty. Yeah. That way I can talk about her humanitarianism, yeah. her dedication to human beings and animal causes. Mm -hmm. And... And that it's an example to your viewers that that's what we do as public figures. Yeah. And that's what's important to to carry on. Yeah. And, Using your platform for good. And you've done this. Look, you've been in the industry a long time. Of course, Betty White, a long time. I assume you all ran into each other at some point. I was point in a movie with her called You Again yeah. with Sigourney Weaver, this funny Disney movie. Yeah. And yes, I loved her. She lived near me. I tried to get a movie made with her uh -huh. that didn't go, but uh, we became friends. and. Lovely human being. Mm -hmm. Great example to me of what a person in the arts can do for other people and animals particularly. Mm -hmm. How does this event feel tonight? A lot of people talking about the excitement about the show, what it's going to look like with Will Packer, but also this, that it's back. It looks it's beautiful awesome. in there. Okay. By the way, I was, I was here yesterday for rehearsal. I'm here really in support. Luckily, I got a seat yeah. to support Maggie Gyllenhaal, yeah. who's my goddaughter. Oh, I didn't and know. And so to be able to see her make that beautiful film, The, the Lost, Lost Daughter, Daughter, with Olivia Colman and Jesse Buckley, oh. and that Maggie herself is nominated for uh, Adapted Screenplay is a thrill. Oh. Well, it's a thrill for us to have you here uh, nice. on the red carpet. Seriously. And, and, and now I'm apparently a, your new co-host. Yes. Which and you, you, you shoot that in New York or L.A.? New York. Uh, it's not going to work. <laughs> Sorry, oh. I'm out. Wow. Bye. Right. He's in. He's JLC out. gone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Really, Thank it's an you. absolute pleasure. Thank you. And enjoy in there. Enjoy oh, yourself in there. Enjoy everything. Of course I, you I, I kind of can tell. Okay. Yes, yeah. everybody. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Seriously. She's out. <laughs> she is so great. She is always on point, on brand, and we've been working with her for years, of course, at GMA. Yep. And she, this is who she is always. She is who she is, and she tells it like it is, even when she's not supposed to. Uh, on a politic. <laughs> I want to ask her for some more stuff yeah, in the room. Like, so what else is happening tonight? You've been in the rehearsals. I, I think she would have told us she everything. <laughs> All right, before tonight's Best Asterisk Act Actress nominees, before they made it to the Oscars, they all had to start somewhere, taking bit parts on TV and film, fighting to make ends meet, and to earn a reputation in the film industry as bankable stars. Here now, our look at these five talented ladies before they made it to the Oscars. Will they kill me, do you think? Kristen Stewart began this award no. season as the front runner for lead actress for her portrayal of Princess Diana in Spencer. Men, husband, sex, mistresses, deceit, succession, it's currency. That's all we have. Acting professionally since age eight, here she is in her very first credited film, The 13th Year. No lines, just online at the water fountain. 
And here's the back of her head as the girl at the ring toss game from the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. Before her breakout role as Patricia Clarkson's daughter. Sam, don't make it worse. In the please. safety of objects. Later. Don't you have any other friends? Do you have a wife? She eluded capture as Jodie Foster's daughter in Panic Room. They can't get in here. It's not a possibility. There's Mom, no don't worry about me. Whoa. The thing looks like it's alive. Evaded security robbing a bank in Catch the Kid. 250 grand coming at you. And survived intergalactic intruders in Sathura, a space adventure. Somebody please talk to me right now! Children are a crushing responsibility. Olivia Coleman gets a nomination for her performance in The Lost Daughter. When the oldest was seven and the youngest was five, I left. <laughs> I abandoned them and I didn't see them for three years. You didn't see your children for three years. But that dramatic role couldn't be more different than her early roles in comedies on British TV. Like Hot Fuzz. Nice one, Doris. And oh, Green sorry, Wing. I'm late, the kids. Time to get ready? Oh, yeah, and then the traffic. Was terrible? Yes, wasn't it? And then I had to stop off at... Oh. Well, who did I leave at the vets then? Let and the Robinsons. And I know it sounds immodest, but I really think I'm superb. If you're wondering who this stranger is, wandering around. Ricky Gervais agreed and cast her in the office. She's writing an article on me. Is it difficult to remain authoritative and yet so popular? Well, no, that wasn't well, it's, my question. Well, uh, well, shall I answer that one first? Sorry, no, can we just stick to my questions? Well, it... maybe you should be clear what the question is. And we can't forget her memorable commercials that ran in Britain so often that she worried they'd derail her acting career. Liv! Kev! <gasps> Liv! Mi amor, yo te quiero mucho, eh? Penelope Cruz is nominated for the Spanish language film Parallel Mothers. Penelope has collaborated many times over the years with director Pedro Almodovar and with husband and actor Javier Bardem. Eres un guarro. Seen here in their first film together, Hamon Hamon. And she was just 15 years old in 1989 when she made her acting debut in a music video. You know, Jim. And he said that I gotta speak up. So here goes. You can't leave me at home, all alone, feeling unloved and useless. Jessica Chastain is unrecognizable as Evangelist Jim Baker's wife, nominated for the eyes of Tammy Faye. I do love the camera. But Why? Well, because it's a person. It's someone to talk to. It's it's God's love through me. But we absolutely recognize her in her earliest TV work on Law & Order, Trial by Jury. She was being stalked. You found me. Everyone's worried about you. On Veronica Mars with Kristen Bell. I'm done keeping quiet. Sarah, you're not going to hurt me again. We found her very first role on ER as a concerned daughter. Where's all this blood from? He pulled out his pick line. You're his nurse? Daughter, I take care of him. All right, nice and easy. That was just a year after she graduated from Juilliard, seen here in rehearsals and plays like Sir Patient Fancy. Oh, no, no, no. I can't spend the afternoon with three women and have to tell the truth. Nicole Kidman is nominated for playing the iconic Lucille Ball in Being the Ricardos. Guess who it is? Bill, Pat, Sam? No. Ralph? Ricky reacts to this. No, it's me. Oh. Yes, of course. Oh, hang on. They're good. She but wanted to be a model in 1983's Skin Deep. Me and my friend Trisha, we do each other's hair all the time. And makes a quick appearance in a Pat Wilson music video, Bop Girl. I'm not dancing with any girl. Johnny, it's a bush dance. You don't have to dance close. And Nicole was just past her sweet 16 when she makes her debut in this Aussie TV remake, Bush Christmas. I look, that same year, she appeared in BMX Bandits. There's no way I'll get a bike like that otherwise. Won't get one by wishing for it. I did. What did you do? Promise to leave home. Even doing many of her own stunts. Yeah. 
Well, okay. they were on with us uh, yeah. yesterday morning. Okay. <laughs> uh, our, our director's trying to produce, uh, cue us. We having the best time <laughs> of our lives yeah, here. Too much fun. The man we've been talking about of the hours that are coming up, yes. Will Packer, the man himself. You got the yes. big smile on the face. How you doing? I'm How you doing? excited. Yes. You know why I got this smile? Because well, I know it's about to come up. Oh. Oh. We knew about this show. Hello. You'd be smiling. Too. I I'm love feeling it. Good. It's oh, gonna be a lot of fun. We also want to point out beautiful wife Heather here, yes, and absolutely. of course producing powerhouse partner, a partner Shayla crime. Cohen. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Happy to have hey you all guys. here. Okay, so we're gonna be our socks are gonna get knocked off. So, like, give me some adjectives to describe what we're gonna do. All of that. All of that. Uh, thrilling. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe a little confusing. Like, wait, what was that? Did that just happen? Oh, wow. uh, unexpected. Um, uh, there's gonna be a lot of things, but it won't be boring. That was always the intention, okay? I don't care if you haven't watched the Oscars in the last 10 years. This show, you don't want to miss. I got some good stuff coming up. Oh, That's why I'm smiling. Now, what part of it are you maybe a little... Is there somewhere in this producing situation that you thought, yo, Will, maybe not. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we well, shouldn't go that far. Like that, and I was like, no, we have to do this. Oh, you were pushing oh. him. Oh, yeah. Ah. yeah. I was like, we got to do this. This is a time for us to get uncomfortable. And a lot of people don't like to get uncomfortable. And this show definitely made us uncomfortable. But we brought some exciting things tonight. You pushed him. So if anything goes wrong, we can go back and say it was your fault. Absolutely. <laughs> he said, okay. the ratings aren't it. Yeah. It's my fault. It's on her. <laughs> it's her fault, yes. I only want the credit. I don't want any of the blame. <laughs> Typical me, Hollywood producer. Tell me where you're going to be tonight, yes. what it's going to be like for you, as we're all enjoying what yes. you're putting on. Yes. What are you doing? I'll be going crazy. I'll be over there with my hand on the five-second button. Okay. It may be that kind of show. So much the five-second button. Yes, you I am. You just practiced so much with the five-second button. It's yeah. hilarious. Well, because I got Amy Schumer. You know, I got Wanda Sykes, right? I got Regina Hall. So I told them, I, I said, guys, have fun. Be loose, be free. I immediately regretted it as soon as I said it because I knew they believed me and took it to heart. Okay. So we will see. I'll be backstage throughout the whole show. You know, you got a bank of monitors. That's what it's like. Just so you know, what's it like to produce the Oscars? It is maddening. It is crazy. You're back there. You got all these monitors. There are a thousand people in your ear. There are things going right. There are things going wrong. You got to decide on this. What do we do with this? This person's late. Change this. Do that. I mean, it's crazy. I have such respect for people who do live shows. I think this is it for me, TJ and Amy. I don't think, I don't know if I got the intestinal fortitude. No. I feel like I'm asleep for 10 weeks after But if this. it's a hit, they're going to yes. beg for you to come back. That may be true. One last word from your wife. How is, how is he doing? He is incredible. He's excited. And this is his moment. Like, this man right here, he doesn't shy away from a challenge. That's Ever. True. That's true. Ever. Gets me in trouble sometimes. Right. Well, yeah. you all, I'm you fearless. Are... That either makes me the right person for this job or the wrong one. <laughs> we'll see well, soon. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. And, yeah. brother, I can't, I'll say it again publicly. You've been my guy for a long time. You supported me for a long time. And I am rooting for you, and a lot of us are, in a major way. And likewise. All right, my brother. Likewise. <laughs> you know my this brother. is a big moment. I know. This is a big yeah. moment. I, know I appreciate it. it. Thank you. We are Thank so you. excited Thank to watch. Thank you for everybody that's going to watch. Let's have a good time, y'all. <laughs> All right. You heard it there, folks. He has guaranteed a good time. Hello. Uh, we have a quick break here, and we will come back on the red carpet. I want to help people, and I want to be a billionaire. I'm on the cutting edge of healthcare. This machine tests your blood in your own home. You're in over your head. You're going to lose everything. You don't understand the science. Her whole image is fake. I don't believe a word she says. You don't understand the vision. I've never met anyone quite like you, Miss Holmes. There's not. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? I won't ask you again, then. Are you a night scene? <laughs> the deeper you go into the black market, the darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? It's about the money, that's all we do. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7 is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it. Serial killer. 
There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. We have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. at the Dolby Theater counting down to the 94th Oscars. And look who we found. Singer, actress, dancer, Sophia Carson, also with her beautiful gown enforcing social distancing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we don't have a choice. I was trying to hug her. <laughs> Thank gorgeous, you, guys. Gorgeous, gorgeous. You're part of the Academy pre-show. Tell know. us what it's been like for you on the red carpet. I mean, this red carpet is just the most electric and beautiful carpet to be a part of. It's a thrill and an honor to be here. So I'm hosting the pre-show live on ABC, which is really exciting. But I get to be here with you guys, which makes me so happy. Oh, we introduce you, singer, talented actress, and dancer all this, but also friend of our show. You've been a great friend of ours, our show, GMA, GMA3 in particular, to the point I immediately said, where is Where's mama? My mom? She's already shaking her head. <laughs> We're not going to put you on, mom. Mom doesn't but like to be on camera. She, oh, she gave you a steely look. She did, and she's giving it again. <laughs> but the point there, you get to hang out and enjoy this night with I mom. I do, which makes it so special. And you guys are like family. Thank you guys so much for always being so special. Are you guys having fun? We are having a blast. I you think guys we... look stunning. Thank you very much. We're just trying to keep up. Oh, thank you. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were saying this pandemic gave everyone a, a, a dose of perspective, a significant one. Absolutely. What's it like to see Hollywood back? It feels amazing. And I think we all feel a little bit luckier than we did before to be a part of this industry and to be able to be a part of moments like tonight when there's so much happening in the world. So I just take a moment and just say, thank you, God. We're all here. We're healthy. We're happy. And we're living our dreams. Well, you enjoy it. We're going to let you get in there and get to work. Thank but it you is guys. so, so good. We saw you, you much earlier, and we said we got to find her at some point. I said the same thing. Us. Well, you look stunning. We can't wait to see the show. Thank, thank you, you very much, Sophia. <laughs> All right. Bye, Mom. Bye, Love you guys. Bye, Mom. <laughs> Bye, guys. She's not even looking Bye, at you. She won't even make eye contact. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. Getting nominated obviously is a thrill. Getting nominated in the same year as your significant other, wow. I would think, makes it even more special. So this year, there are two couples in the mix for acting Oscars. But as fun as that all sounds, sometimes an Oscar isn't good for romance. Oh. Uh, ABC's Will Gans has that story. This Oscar season, love is in the air. From Belfast to West Side Story, couples in the spotlight on the big screen. You are marvelous, Rose. And in real life, Kirsten Dunst and Jesse Plemons together since 2016, both scoring Oscar nominations this year for playing a married couple in Power of the Dog. I told you I'd teach you. Lucy. Javier Bardem up for best actor for his work in Being the Ricardos alongside Nicole Kidman. But Bardem's real life wife squaring off against her in the race for best actress. Penelope Cruz nominated for Parallel Mothers. I guess I'm the And while being nominated alongside your big screen bay might seem like a happy ending worthy of Hollywood, beware the Oscars couples curse. The so-called couple's curse suggests that when one half of a couple wins an Oscar, the relationship is doomed. Hollywood history backs it up. From Brangelina, Brad Pitt won an Oscar for producing 12 Years a Slave in 2014. The couple divorced two years later. To Benifer, Ben Affleck winning a Best Picture Oscar in 2013 for Argo, splitting with Jen Garner two years later. Even further back than that, that was the way it was supposed to be. Liz Taylor and Richard Burton playing a married couple hanging on by a thread in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Maybe Georgie boy didn't have the stuff, and maybe he didn't have it in it. Stop it, Martha. Like hell I will. She took home an Oscar for that role. He didn't. They divorced a few years later. Then they got back together. Then divorced again. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. <laughs> But for this year's Silver Screen Sweethearts, no need to panic. Frances McDormand and Joel Cohen are both Oscar winners. Mostly, I'd like to thank Frances, um, without whom the part wouldn't have been written, um, we would, the movie wouldn't have been made, and we wouldn't be standing here. As are Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. And to my husband, who I love, and I share this award with you, along with this one, too. Thank you so much. 
See, sometimes Oscar makes a fine third wheel. <laughs> I'll take that third wheel. All right, we have a lot more ahead, including the man who was hoping his turn as Fred Merton being the Ricardos earns him Oscar number two, J.K. Simmons, and more live interviews from the red carpet when we come back. Stay with us. Time, anytime, Nightline. It was an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcasts. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues. The Hunt. True crime. 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. Hey, my mom. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it, these days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. Down that countdown well underway, and looky looky who has arrived. That's one third of the hosting trio. Wanda Sykes, she is here on the red carpet. That is kind of amazing the look she is wearing this is a actually. power suit i like that a yeah lot. she's got it she's rocking it and of course she's going to be hosting along with amy schumer regina hall and we know that uh there's a five second delay yes available will said he practiced <laughs> this amy schumer i think is his first concern yeah that's he said that's what his biggest concern is but uh, that makes it fun we shall see uh <laughs> the best supporting actor category we'll talk about that now has four first-time nominees and one actor who already knows what it's like to be handed that little gold man, J.K. Simmons. Uh, his role as Fred Mertz and Aaron Sorkin's Being the Ricardos has him up for his second Oscar. Maybe it's Chris Conley. Talk to him about it. Believe me, you do not want me to read this sober. I'm starting to get a little tired of your casual well, insults. Well, my insults don't feel like putting on a tuxedo for you, kid. It's a lot of fun to see you, like, hitting the forehand at 150 miles an hour during that table read. You are coming at it 100%, and to play it must have been heaven. It was, I, I, when I read the script, I realized, I mean, every page turn, the gifts that he was giving to all of us. Don't tell me comedy. And if little Rusty is a communist, then I'm gonna beat the out of a seven-year-old kid. I have no problem with that. I'm done. That, right there? was funnier than anything you've written so far this year. Everybody in the cast will tell you it's, you know, to to do Aaron Sorkin's words is a is a gift. The Oscar goes to J.K. Simmons Whiplash. Did you get better offers after you won the first Oscar? I got a lot more, a lot more offers for sure. Yeah, yeah, better offers. But it, but it was really the biggest difference was just it was kind of a deluge, you know. I mean, I'd already I was already more fortunate than I ever dreamed I would be as an actor, getting offers at all and, and not having to audition anymore. But was it weird to say no then? Well, no, it, it really wasn't because I, I said no when I had no business saying no, you know, and God bless my agent who's been with me for all these years, and his understanding because, you know, foolishly or not, even when I was waiting tables in between regional theater jobs, I, I, I just... You know, I, I do this work because I love doing this work. And, and if I'm going to do a job that I 
don't love what's on the page, then, then what's the point? How is it different this time than it had been the time before? I mean, honestly, this it's hard to say this without sounding arrogant, so maybe I shouldn't, but here I go. You know, <laughs> seven years ago, it was, it was kind of by the time we got to the Oscar nominations, everybody around me was saying, you know, it's, it's assumed, and, and indeed it did, it did go my way. Uh, this year was, you know, more of a surprise because, uh, you know, there are a lot of us who have been kind of nominated for this one but not for that one. And uh, and obviously a brilliant group of uh, supporting actor nominees at, at all these award things. So, um, yeah, I answered the phone. It was my agent. I assumed he was calling about, you know, whatever, the next job or something. So I got the call from uh, my agent and uh, I said hello and he said congratulations. And it, it took me a second to go, oh, right, it's that Tuesday and, uh, you know, Oscar noms. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We are out here laughing and having a good time. A lot of people are here. Um, but three women are going to have us laughing this evening. We yes. got this trio of women hosting. They have the big task at hand. Entertain, make people laugh. Don't offend anybody. Isn't that part of the job, too? You got to offend one or two. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's going to be difficult maybe to even keep the show moving along at a steady pace. So how are they getting ready? Our Lara Spencer to talk to two of tonight's MCs. I probably will be nervous on the night. It definitely helps knowing I'm gonna walk out it, with, yeah. with Regina with and Amy. I mean, it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's different. It's different. We're having Power in numbers, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Cause if we suck, you won't suck alone. Right. Hosts Wanda Sykes and Regina Hall speaking to us about the Oscars. I mean, I'm looking forward to interacting with the audience. Mm -hmm. I've watched them since I was a little girl, their mm -hmm. movies. It's just so many great moments, uh, musical artists. So I think there's not, you know, I'm gonna I'm a lock eyes with the whole crowd if I can. Yeah. What's been the best advice from past Oscar hosts? Ah. Whoopi told me to just, she said, y'all go out there and have fun. She said, the more fun you all have, the more fun the audience has. Wrap it up, we want to go home. Same thing with Jimmy Kimmel. Mm -hmm. If the room is having fun, it. it's a great show. That's he said, so have fun. Sykes and Hall, along with Amy Schumer, who wasn't able to join us, are making history as the first all-female trio to host the Oscars. If they'd called me and said, yeah. would you host the Oscar? Hell no. Right, that's a different. You would not have done it if it was you solo? Absolutely not. I don't think I would have no either. No way in the world. Talk to me about the experience of the three of you acting as a team. Amy is driving us nuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say it right now. Now it can be told. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's driving us nuts. So, ladies, are you ready to host the Oscars? Yeah. We're gonna crush this. We just have to do better than last year's host. That is the thing. We shot the promos. It was the first time we all got together. Yeah. And Amy comes in, okay, all right, look, this is what we're gonna do. It was like, it was like, uh, when a squirrel gets in your house and you're just like, where'd it go? You know, and it's like running up and down your leg. And that was the energy that Amy has. Yeah, she is so excited yeah, about she really is. this. Schumer telling us last week why she decided to take the hosting gig. I just feel like we're, you know, we're coming out of this pandemic and I think we all have kind of a new lease on life. And I'm like, I want to host the Oscars. I want to perform. I feel like telling jokes and, you know, getting to do it with Wanda and Regina is like beyond my wildest yeah. dreams. And on a night celebrating movies' biggest stars with three of the funniest women in comedy at the helm, anything is possible. I'm really excited about the snippets we've heard about the music. Mm. Mm. A singing? Uh oh, I didn't gave it oh, away. Don't, don't. I didn't give it away. <laughs> Will Packer, your incredible executive producer, has called himself the coach mm -hmm. of you guys and said, I need to put these three amazing players in the right positions. What positions would you say you all are playing in this year's Super Bowl of Hollywood, the Oscars? Mm. We have a mm. strong offense. I think so. He set it up where we, you know, yeah. we, we come out, we're united. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, hand the ball off here, yeah. Amy, you run with it. Yeah. And then it's, you know, pass boom, it. pass yeah. it to Regina. Maybe, you know. Throw it back. Throw I don't know back. football, but Maybe whenever, when it, they do that. Okay. Yeah, hike. <laughs> <the ball. laughs> Three female hosts running yeah. the show, a Will Packer production. Yes. I mean, this is a different year. Yeah. It's exciting. I we'll be able to celebrate after. You know, hopefully we'll be hungover mm. right. from celebrating. I hope so. And we are back here on the red carpet. You're looking live. Uh, things are really, really heating up. And that is a very busy carpet. And look who we have with us here now. 
I have been, okay, let, let's go ahead and confess. We have been hanging out in the bar together, the hotel, yeah. for the past yeah. couple days. Yeah, we have been. We have Because been. I saw you really mad. I was like, I had to check on you. She you did. Were okay. That's a true story. <laughs> That's a true story. But Sheila E., good to have you here. You're performing you. tonight. I am, yes. And now, what can we expect? Tell us. A uh, little percussion, a little spice, you know, a little, right. little spice, you know, adding a little color to what's happening. <laughs> I love it. So how's it felt on the red carpet? It's, this is amazing to be on the red carpet with everyone. I mean, and there's so many great people here. And, of course, I'm a fan of all of these movie stars because I'm like, oh, my God, there's, you know, so I just get excited. And I'm standing with the two most amazing people right now. So Aww. what can I say? <laughs> this is amazing. You know, and tell folks as well how, and again, I don't think it's a secret now, how it's being broken up to where your role, right, into three different sections of music. You got a DJ for the first hour, and then your section is the second hour of the show. Right, yeah, so the first part is D-Nice, and then the yep. second hour is the All-Star Band, and I'm just playing with the All-Star Band, and we're just playing a couple of songs, and then we kind of end with, I'm not gonna tell you. Okay, huh? we gotta keep some surprises <laughs> for the show. Yes. Uh, obviously, we're all looking forward to your performance. What are you most looking forward to in the Oscars tonight, to seeing, to watching? Um, I don't know, because, you know, I've been in the room already. I love how the producers made it. It's, we're all on the same level. It's just amazing. It's very welcoming, and, and it's pleasant, and I'm just excited to sit in the room, you know? It's just beautiful. So everything about it is going to be great. Okay, now you keep hearing that. Well, we yeah. do, again, we are so, so excited, and it's Thank so you. great to have you be a part of the night, and it's been really great having you to hang out with. <laughs> Uh, he was sending me selfies of the two of you I in the know. car. I was like, we were smiling. We had a blast. It no, was we awesome. had a blast. Yeah, you, that's what it's about. You cheered him up. We yeah. needed you really did. Uh, cheering up. Yeah, you did it. You did. Okay. All right. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Sheila, good luck, and then we're going to be rooting for you hard, all right? Yeah, we are. Okay. We are. All right, folks, and don't go anywhere. We have more live interviews ahead as we count down to the 94th Oscars right here on ABC News Live. And there, do we have? There it is. Yes. I can't see. Can you see that, Rose? I can see she looks stunning. Oh, just the chest thing. Yes. Oh, my God. She's arriving on the red carpet. She said she was going to get here early because she wanted to be in her seat when the show started for the awards that are going to be handed out before the show. So she's here early to make sure she supports some of those other categories. So what a day and night already underway here in Hollywood. I want to help people and I want to be a billionaire. I'm on the cutting edge of healthcare. This machine tests your blood in your own home. You're in over your head. You're going to lose everything. You don't understand the science! Her whole image is fake. I don't believe a word she says. You don't understand the vision. I've never met anyone quite like you, Miss Holmes. There's not. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? I won't ask you again, then. Are you a Nazi? <laughs> the deeper you go into the black markets, you could be putting your life at risk. The darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? It's about the money. That's all we do. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7 is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. It was a scary time in the 70s. You had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. We are 
back live on the Oscars red carpet counting down to tonight's big show and the big stars are showing up big time now. And wow, <laughs> big. Um, we got another big star hanging out with our big time talent. Chris Conley has one of the nominees. No stranger to being nominated. Hey there, Chris. How are you, you guys? Yes, I'm here with 13 time nominee Diane Warren. Nominated once again for Best Original Song. Diane, welcome back to the Oscars. Great to see you. Great, yeah. Great to be here as well. Now, no one would know the rituals of Oscar night better than you at this point, right? I've been here before. <laughs> but I'm so happy to be here. I mean, and, and it's kind of back to normal. You know, none of us have masks. We're not on a little Zoom. We're like, we're here with, you know, hopefully this is safe. <laughs> but Your lips to God's excited. ear, exactly, right? You're nominated for Somehow You Do. I am. From Four Good Days. Yes. And the wonderful Reba McIntyre is singing that song. Yes. And the song is so perfect out of, Re uh, out of Reba's mouth because it speaks to a challenging journey and yet a triumphant end. Yes. And there was no one better to, to sing that song than Reba. And, you know, when I do a song for a movie, like, I, I cast the artist for the the song and for the movie so she was the perfect you know she just she just really represents you know resilience and being a survivor she's all about that and, and the she, audience affection too for her is just monumental the love people have for her. watching her go through there they were all screaming I was like who's that it's like Reba wow I love it she's a great artist 13 times I have to ask do you have an acceptance speech in that boom box you've got there well I have ideas in my mind because I you know how many cr crumbled pieces of paper and and, I, and save things on my phone. I kind of know what I'm going to say, but I will. They will have to like carry me up there because I'll faint if it actually happens. So I kind of have an idea of what, of what I'm going to say. We've we'll got some really strong people to do the carrying, and we'll hope the best for you. Thank you, Chris. Great seeing you, Diane. Diane Warren, 13-time nominee. TJ, Amy, what say you? Phenomenal. We yeah we. We can't wait to see if she finds, this is her, the 13th might be her lucky number, right? And it's funny, you have Diane there. I was looking at Reba McIntyre right behind us, so all the stars are showing up here. Now, the Oscar-nominated actor from one of those widely acclaimed streaming films, Coda, is poised to make history tonight with the win in the Best Supporting Actor category. Troy Kotzer would become the first deaf man to win an Oscar, and as we've heard many experts say, he is the odds-on favorite to win. Here's Kelly Carter with Troy Kotzer. Frank Rossi uses a little bit of salty language. Tell me about that because I, I heard that you had to help create some bad words for him or what was that like? We actually had our rating of R reduced to PG-13. The MPAA was like, oh, that's too graphic and gave us an R rating. And I told myself, <laughs> what? You know, the sign language is too graphic for you? You weren't prepared to see this vul these vulgarities in sign language? I mean, where have all you hearing people been this whole time? <laughs> you know, you need to learn about our deaf culture and our language. And so that's why CODA is so wonderful to really show how colorful our language can be, if you know what I mean. So it was so fun to play Frank Rossi. He had to have been extremely seasoned and an extremely experienced fisherman. So I just had to delve into that character as much as I could mm -hmm. so that I would look like an experienced fisherman. In real life, I'm not. I'm from Arizona where we don't have any whales, all right? Yeah. I don't care if these guys yeah. regulate us to death. Because mm -hmm. you're the only one making money here. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that you got up very early every morning to go out and fish. What did you learn when you were on those boats that early in the morning? Well, really, I was grumpy. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> the best time to catch fish is very early in the morning because they're high activity, they're feeding, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they pull in the nets before the sun rises. Okay. Because, and that's when they're catching all the fish, right? Mm -hmm. And sorting them out and, and dividing up the species, the squid, the monkfish. They have these sharp teeth with the flashing light over the top of their heads and ooh, that's dangerous. <laughs> and the lobsters were like cr creepy crawling and pinching at me and I had to sort them aside. I mean, imagine trying to hold a squid as it's popping out of your hand. Yeah. And it feels like soap, right? And so I really learned a lot in the two weeks we trained out at sea. 
And I don't eat seafood, just to let you know. Oh, wow. But I had to learn to really understand Frank Rossi's world and his fishing world. So you've been working as an actor for a long time now. Describe what this moment feels like, because it has to be incredible. It is truly amazing. I never thought of where, my, the decisions I make where it would lead me to. And really, it's actually happening for me. And looking back, everything I did was what I loved. And I was the only one who could stop myself. Walk me back to when you first told your parents, who are hearing parents, that you wanted to be an actor. Um, what was their reaction to you saying that's what you wanted to do? Well, really, my parents were reluctant. They said, OK. They thought it would be a temporary thing of just a couple of years, and they thought I would change careers. But I am stubborn. And my parents started to worry and chew their fingernails. Remember, this is back in the 80s and 90s, where Hollywood wasn't ready for a deaf actor. And my, and my parents knew, because they were older and wiser. And I was a naive young kid who wanted to be an actor. But looking back, I completely understand what, where they were coming from. They were worried. They knew it would be tough to have opportunities as a deaf actor to break into Hollywood. And I wish they were alive today to see me and everything I'm doing today. They both passed away, but their spirits are still with me. And I'm sure they feel proud of me. And you know, if it does happen that I receive an Oscar, I'm going to visit my parents at the, at the grave site and just share my award with them at the cemetery and show it to them. You know, we talk a lot about all the fun and excitement we have here, but there's also a lot of emotion. And uh, I think it's gonna be an emotional moment for so many people when they get up and accept their awards. And, and a lot of people think Troy is gonna be among them. So it'll be very fun to watch and, and special, I think. You know, this is so meaningful to these actors who have worked so hard. And the night is in the hands of three hosts yeah. this evening, yes? <laughs> uh, Kelly is on the carpet just down from us with one of tonight's co-hosts, Kelly. Am. <laughs> I am. I'm here with one of the trio, co-host tonight, Wanda Sykes and her lovely wife. Thank you for stopping by. Of course. How are you? I'm doing all right. So what can we expect from Hampton University's finest tonight on the Oscar stage? Oh, man. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring that, that pirate, that Hampton pirate energy. Um, it's going to be a good time, uh, a big night to celebrate. Um, you know, we've been, what, this is our, what, two years, three years without a, a host, and then you get three hosts, and not just three hosts, but three women, and two of them are people, you know, uh, 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 women of color, so, man, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a great night. How do you possibly prepare for a moment like this? Did you run any comedy by your lovely wife, or, or what, what did you do to prep for the Oscar stage tonight? Um, you pretty much just, just uh, grab on, you know, and, and really, a lot of prayer. And, uh, you know, they got a, they got a great team of, of writers that we're working with. So, you know, you, you just got to approach it as this is a huge event. But, you know, just go in there like, let's, let's have some fun. I want to have some fun. I'm not, I, I've, I've been pretty stress-free. It, it's weird. Yeah, weirdly, I, I haven't, like, freaked out yet. <laughs> Wanda Sykes want to have fun tonight. Wanda, you are all of us. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and chatting with us. Good luck tonight. Amy and TJ, I'm going to go ahead and kick it back to you guys. All right, Kelly, thank you so much. Yes, the red carpet is filling up here. Another one of tonight's Oscar hosts, Regina Hall, arriving just a few moments ago, looking stunning there on the red carpet. We also have Alana Haim from the Best Picture nominated film Licorice Pizza arriving as well. And there are so many more nominees headed our way here on the red carpet, so stay with us. I'm just doing what we're told. I want to help people and I want to be a billionaire. I'm on the cutting edge of healthcare. This machine tests your blood in your own home. You're in over your head. You're going to lose everything. You don't understand the science. Her whole image is fake. I don't believe a word she says. You don't understand the vision. I've never met anyone quite like you, Miss Holmes. There's not. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? I won't ask you again, then. Are you a Nazi? <laughs>
But the deeper you go into black markets, you put people to your life like this. The darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? It's about the money, that's all we do. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7 is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Welcome back to the red carpet. We are live from Hollywood, and there she is, Amy Schumer, one of the three hosts of this evening and the person that Will Packer said he's most afraid of tonight. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, maybe we should uh, couch that a little bit. Uh, he did. He said, he. Will Packer told us he gave her the okay to do your thing and be you, and then he immediately regretted <laughs> telling her to do her thing. But we've seen all three hosts now, right? Yes. Wanda, Amy, and Regina. Regina. They are all here. Well, Kieran Hines, uh, he's been a busy man, a journeyman actor for the past 40 years now, but it's his performance as Pops in this year's Belfast that garnered him his first acting nomination. Hines grew up in Belfast at the time of the film, though, as did Belfast writer and director Kenneth Branagh. Now, here now is Chris Connolly with the talented actor up for a Best Actor Oscar. Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, your buddy. Does the doctor want to see you again? Oh, he's given me a letter for the hospital. And did you go? There's no point. <sighs> if I was going to walk from your childhood house, how many steps would I have to go before I reached Ken's childhood house? I'd say about um, 600. Like a 10-minute walk? A uh, walk? Yeah, 10 minutes wow. fast walk. Uh, yeah, it was very interesting, and we never met. Obviously, we went to separate schools because he was at a Protestant school, I was at a Catholic school. Uh, Jimmy said he'd drive me to the hospital in the morning. No, and I told him he would not. I'm taking you on the bus. I'm walking you in, and when they're done, you can be bloody sure I'm walking you back out again. You hear me? It's you and Dame Judy, obviously, and you're not the same age. Quite. How did you? How did you? Would you? Would you meet in the middle? We you? did. Yeah, we had an agreement. I'm not saying who was going in which direction, but one of us would age up and one would age down. We'd meet somewhere in the middle. We didn't you say. We literally had this conversation with her. It helped that also with the aging process that the character Pop was uh, carrying an illness as well. So that kind of aged him, helped to age him as well. And uh, those were glorious days. Just. Uh, being the, uh, just working with her. The way to handle a woman is to love her. Simply love her. Get off me. me. <laughs> As you read the script, how close to your own experience of the troubles and of being young in Belfast was this story? Yeah, you could feel the whole city, the, the atmosphere. There was kind of a dark cloud over it. And when we went back to school, there was this awful feeling that uh, of unease. Belfast will still be here when you get back. Will you? I'm going nowhere you won't find me. This is 40 years of movie making for you. Your first film ever, Excalibur? Way back in time. The great John Borman, yeah. Yeah, he gave me a on my first film break, and then I went back to the theater for another 10 years before I started getting involved again. Could you ever have imagined 40 years later that you would be here with an Oscar nomination? I, I, I didn't imagine it three months ago, <laughs> basically. Um, I'm still trying to get to grips with it, yeah. And to be very honest, um, 
I kind of forgot that it was Oscar nomination. Oh, come on, really? I did, no, I did, I did, because I was domestically challenged. <laughs> so my head was somewhere else, and so it was a surprise. Uh, and it was a, yeah, it was kind of very thrilling, obviously, and very gratifying. And you all can tell how busy it is yeah. on the red carpet now. We're people watching. We're like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, look. But some of these people are people watching us because they, they uh, <laughs> several have told us yes. we were getting ready at the hotel and we've been watching you guys. And they were like, we're still here, too. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. But this is a fun atmosphere. We're going to turn to Maggie Gyllenhaal now, uh, known throughout the last three decades as a versatile actress in films from Donnie Darko to The Dark Knight. Now, her debut as both director and screenwriter has led to three Oscar nominations, including a nod for Best Adapted Screenplay for The Lost Daughter. Our Kelly Carter had a chance to catch up with Gyllenhaal at the Oscar nominees' luncher. Where did you find her? No, I took her. Why? I was just playing. Playing? We were all messed up. You saw us. I'm an unnatural mother. In another film, the protagonist here would be a villain. But that's not the case in your movie. Tell me a little bit about that dynamic and maybe why you gravitated towards telling this story in particular. Um, I guess I'm not that interested in characters that are easily identifiable as either like just clearly, purely, simply a heroine or or a villain. What were your daughters like when they were little? Were they like this willful little creature? I don't honestly, I can't remember much, actually. Oh, no, you can't forget anything about your own children. Is that your experience? Isn't that true for so many people who you meet? You know, yeah. are you friendly? Are you ominous? I'm compelled by you, but it's gonna take a little more energy to figure out which thing you are, and probably you're a little of both. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And most of us are a little of both. So I'm going to show you a photo. It's a throwback. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell me about this person in this photo and what they might have been thinking. <laughs> yeah, that is a picture from when I was in a play in high school. I can't remember what the play was, but I remember I was, like, really jamming. You know? <laughs> like... What were her hopes and dreams for this career, you know, at this time? Well, I think when I was around that age is when I saw The Piano, the Gene Campion film. And when I saw The Piano, something really did change for me. And I do feel, even though my work is very different than Jane Campion's, even though, of course, I'm my own director and writer and self, I, I do feel it sounds, it sounds sentimental, but like I actually mean it. Totally honestly, I am actually standing on the shoulders of the work that she did yeah. to get to a place where where I felt entitled to even feel how much I wanted to direct. Where were you in your career when you decided that you did actually want to go ahead and break out and be a director? I think probably it had to do in some ways with starting to produce. Mm -hmm. You know, I was producing on The Deuce and I was producing on this film, The Kindergarten Teacher, and all of a sudden I was at the table mm -hmm. and I could start to see how badly I wanted to get my hands in all of it. And yeah. I just, I, I, I didn't really even allow myself to feel it before that. But then when you're sitting at the table and you're like, uh, okay, no, sorry, I won't say. You know, I, yeah. okay, I have another, okay, no, no, I won't say. You know, <laughs> until you're directing and there's space for all of your ideas. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right, do, do we call them ushers that are yelling <laughs> at people to keep it moving, folks? <laughs> keep it moving. Yes, the red carpet is packed now. But uh, what we got 30 minutes before the early show starts. And a lot of people look like they're headed to the theater to honor those people being awarded. But look at this. Now, this is someone we absolutely adore, uh, Robach and I. We've spent a lot of time with her uh, over the past couple of years on our show, GMA3. But that is Marley Madlin arriving on the red carpet. Star, of course, of Coda, one of the best picture nominees tonight. And look at there. There is Power of the Dog couple, Kirsten Dunst and Jesse Plemons on the red carpet. Both are nominated for Oscars tonight. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Four months. 24 months. The last 24 months. But we started shooting and then COVID. 
happened. You know, the fate of the world was so uncertain. The way it happened was so scary and traumatizing. I think the last 24 months have just taught us resilience. My relationship with my kids, our bonds will never be the same because of the time we spent. That was the year I got to know my family better. People have decided that they want to spend their time doing things that are deeply meaningful to them. The way we work and this idea of office centricity is over. We are never going back to a pre-COVID version of that. How is it that somebody finds love during a pandemic? <laughs> We'd go on dates together, where I would bring my laptop with me to a restaurant. The stares that we got from people in the restaurant. You don't <laughs> like, girl, you know what you just went through? I went from being laid off, going full time with my company, being on Shark Tank, and we survived the global pandemic. I now have this amazing business that I love. I'm just happy. The last 24 months have been harrowing and humbling. What has happened caused every human being to make a decision on are you going to grow or are you going to cower? And the universe wasn't having that. They're like, no, we got other plans for you. Robin Roberts, the emotional and powerful new 2020 event special. 24 months that changed the world. This Wednesday night at 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. The deeper you go into a black market, the darker it gets. Traffic, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. Monday morning, the Oscars party roars on with GNA. Woo! Let's go! Oscars, baby! The stars, the style, the winners, and some Hollywood surprises on GNA. everyone to our countdown to the Oscars take a look at that oh. the trio from oh. West Side Story together right there on the red carpet that's Steven Spielberg Frida Moreno and Ariana DeBose Spielberg up for best director Ariana up for best supporting actress for the same role that Rita Moreno won 60 years ago it is lovely to see them arrive here you know <laughs> everyone is saying Ariana DeBose is the shoe in and just to think to see those two together all these years later the same role that is special and that has to make for a special night everyone is pretty much guaranteed if that did not happen tonight whoo, it'd be pretty big it'd be huge yeah. but it's, not, it's it's gonna happen i hate right. to talk like that i'm sorry <laughs> it's, it's, happening. Like it's, it's happening he's stirring the pot uh, uh we are we <laughs> we want to uh get the moment of truth from you guys okay uh just tell us what film is going to win best picture tonight it's going to be Coda. 94 years of stats are breaking this year. I agree. It is the night for Coda. That would be the first streaming service to ever win Best Picture. And I've got to say, Tim Cook just walked right by us. Okay? <laughs> it's a good night. Going to be a good night for him. There are a lot sure. of people. It, it's so hard. Robach and I, during every single commercial break, our back is to the camera because you so much is happening behind you. So many stars, so many Oscar winners uh, are just floating behind you. It's just kind of surreal. I know you all feeling that as well, Chris uh, and Kelly, where you are. People have been passing by you all, but I will ask uh, the same... And the ushers trying to get everybody into the theater. <laughs> this way, people. This way. Uh, but Chris and Kelly, uh, who's going to win Best Picture tonight? I mean, I'll go first. It's going to be Coda. I think they're going to have a really big night tonight. I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to make history as the first streaming film to win Best Picture. Coda, a tribute to the power of the deaf community and deaf culture, and at the same time, a tribute to the power of the human singing voice. Looking at life from both sides now, just like the Joni Mitchell song says at the end of the film, guys. Wow, I mean, Coda, 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 Coda. Um, well, give me a second. I, actually, I didn't want to leave you out here, Josie. I mean, I know you're talking fashion, but who's going to win Best Picture? Oh, I'm going Coda 100% okay. all the ways. So there you go. How about Best Dressed of the uh, afternoon so far? So far for me, I have to say Ariana is well, killing it. She's going to walk yeah. away tonight with all of it. Folks need to keep it moving, and so do we, actually. So we will see. <laughs> in just a few hours, who takes home gold tonight is going to be a spectacular show. Do you have a particular uh, award that you're most looking forward to other than Best Picture? Uh, film editing and original song because we can see Lin-Manuel Miranda EGOT this year. 
be the third youngest ever. I'm looking forward to that. All right. And guys, well, before we get off here, we want to take a moment. Uh, Chris Conley, Kelly Carter, thank you all both. You all have been holding it down right there uh, for us for the past five hours here now. And Chris, we cannot thank you enough, man. Your zingers, your one liners, <laughs> you are just absolutely television gold, my man. And this is your thing. This is your lane. This is your Super Bowl. So we always appreciate having you. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And thank we want to you. encourage all of you who are watching to stay tuned because it isn't over yet. Our time might be done. Oh. Here. But your local ABC station is going to have all the continuing excitement coming up here live from Hollywood. And then the Oscars pre show kicks off. It's the official now, one. No, okay. I didn't want to say one. that line. <laughs> so the past five hours of our lives have not been official. I don't official. mind being unofficial. It's kind of fun. I don't like That's that. Right. Okay, well, <laughs> it's kicking off now. ABC followed at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific by, of course, the Oscars. Don't miss it for now on behalf of everyone here, of course. You all, thank you all so much as well. Thank Clayton, you. Elizabeth, Josie, thank I appreciate you. you all being here. And give the report, how are the feet, Robes? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Th these shoes are coming off in three okay. seconds. I can promise you that. All right. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your Oscar Sunday, and thank you for spending some time with us. Months. 24 months. The last 24 months. But we started shooting and then COVID happened. You know, the fate of the world was so uncertain. The way it happened was so scary and traumatizing. I think the last 24 months have just taught us resilience. My relationship with my kids, our bonds will never be the same because of the time we spent. That was the year I got to know my family better. People have decided that they want to spend their time doing things that are deeply meaningful to them. The way we work and this idea of office centricity is over. We are never going back to a pre-COVID version.